Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Fire. Hi, Dave, with your plunging neckline. I've missed you. <laughs> I missed you too. This is this and that. We are going to be discussing everything going on in the figure skating world. Jonathan is on location in San Francisco. I was just coming back from physical therapy. We are trying to, you know, get back on our, our rolling system here. So if you're new here, please subscribe below. Smash that like button. We have lots to catch up on. Uh, Jonathan, yesterday. I, I had such a skating moment. And, you know, we love this because um, I've been friends with this couple. You know, they're married for a really long time. They used to be my neighbors down the street. And one of them is uh, an organist at a church. And they also did a fundraiser because he has a private voice studio and they performed and they were doing Schubert. And the soprano is singing in German. And I'm like, oh, Jonathan would love this, right? The search <laughs> title. You know, the whole thing. I'm not, I'm not really a Schubert fan. I appreciate Schubert, but he doesn't always pull my heartstrings. But Shepard on the Rock is good. Yeah. All right. They, which they did as the finale. Okay. But they were singing the serenade. And I was like, oh my God, I know this. Like, you know, like when you hear skating music out of context and you're like trying to like match the movement to the music. And I was like, okay. Like I was having a moment. I'm like, this is such great music. Dun, da, 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 da. And then I was like, oh my God, it's Karina Zion. <laughs> Roland Schubert was like, ah. <laughs> How dare they? So, you know, we Amazing. need to get back to classical music and someone needs to do this piece of music that's not arena, okay? This is uh, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I'm telling you. Like there's so much I wish you had grabbed a bunch of choreographers to have taken with you. Because I feel like if more choreographers, you know, consumed music like that, they would realize how much more is out there and how much may have been used only once before and deserves a better interpretation now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember Sandra's like, I was surprised she picked this piece of music. There was a real Sandraism. Okay, <laughs> yesterday, the internet was broken by a young Ilya Malinin. I haven't, I've had some things going on. So I've been like in and out of social media and also like it's a little bit of our detox time after a very right. intense, Agree. A very intense amount of time. And I've wanted to report and been getting my mojo back after being like very burned out from so many things going on. Ilya Malinin's quad axle, I mean, I know. <laughs> that was my response too. I was just like, it, and it was good. It was and good. It, and it's so funny because I was talking to a coach who used to work with him and he told me, oh, that quad axle is going to be no problem. And I was like, oh, okay. Like I, I mean, I think he's got the confidence to do it. But then we saw him at Junior Worlds and we saw things, he looked like he was growing. And you thought, yeah. oh, maybe he's adjusting. Who knows what's going to happen? Now Our conversation. Back. Yeah, yeah, OK. I don't understand large fan group hysteria. I'm not that young anymore, so, you know. Yeah. I mean, look, when I was a young boy who loved Michelle Kwan and Tara was doing that triple loop, triple loop. Yes, I was like, you know, there wasn't Twitter for people to talk about their feelings in this way. I don't think Ilya doing something means that it's mean to Yuzu or that he shouldn't have, like, I, I oh my. The Yuzu fandom has gone out of control because of course, when we were discussing <clears throat> the quad axle and we had seen Yuzu's attempt, we did not see one that looked anything like this. Well, like, we had seen one that looked like, yeah, if we had seen one that looked like this, we were like, oh yeah, he should, he might as well go for it. But of course the ones we saw from Yuzu were so far from what this was. And that's not to take away from Yuzu's talent or that to say that Ilya can produce this in a competition, but uh, like it's undeniable to me that this is of, of the handful that, of attempts we have seen that this is above and beyond the greatest attempt I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, keep doing now it. Now I believe it. Now I believe it is possible and coming. You know, with the other attempts from a couple of different skaters, you're like, okay, yeah, I understand logistically, maybe they're working towards it. But this one, I was like, oh, it's here. 
it's here. Do you think anyone ever looks back and goes, oh wait, we didn't send him to the Olympics? <laughs> and then justify it by saying he had a tough time at Worlds. But the whole point is like, for someone like that, the more experience they can get right now, the better, but. But in defense of the Fanyu, I believe that Ilya Malinin is doing something wrong. Mm. I put a lot of thought into this. I feel I've become awakened. I watched an interview this week with an Olympic champion. And I believe that Ilya Malinin may be doing adrenochrome. And I know that that is just a really strong accusation, John. He may be doing what? Adrenochrome. I don't know what that means. Okay. So Jamie Saleh awakened me to something. Oh, 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 <laughs> that whole thing. <laughs> oh God, yeah, okay. Do you know what adrenochrome is? What they believe no. in? Paul, that's so, okay, so this was Let something me... like, I followed Jamie on Twitter and I had, I had to unfollow her and Lloyd was... Eisler because it was just so vile and so wackadoodle, the things that were coming out of those Twitter feeds that I was like- So oh, you really believe that people who are at like the 33rd level and the upper echelons of these organizations are getting this adrenochrome and that it's this like, thing that's making people powerful and young and being able to do quad axles. And I believe it is what a Terry is giving those girls, okay? They Maybe believe- the grandparents have it. <laughs> they believe QAnon followers claim the drug adrenochrome is harvested from the blood of children by Hollywood elites. Hollywood and Democrat of those believers is Jamie Sallet, as we saw in that video, a very lengthy video panel discussion. With yeah. a girl that they didn't seem to know or have any interest in talking to. And right. it was one of those nasty, nice, nasty yoga teachers. Mm. She was a little frightened. I'm just- Yeah, I, now uh, the clip was sent to me. Where did you find the clip? Like where did she- was sent post to it? me. Okay. It was sent to me by several people who said, like, stop what you are doing and watch this. On first viewing, it just made me really sad. And on second, like, watching it with a group of people, I thought, oh, dear. Like, when you start breaking down what's happening, I thought, hmm, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So like I just, you know, it was a lengthy video and I just sort of was dropping the cursor here or, you know, there. And each time it stopped, it was like another like, oh gosh, keep going. You know, there were some really great quotes. Mm. Like when Jamie said that people accuse her of being racist, but she works with Special Olympians, so that can't be true. <laughs> I'm not following, but okay. Well, I guess that clears that up, Jamie, thanks. <laughs> But her son isn't speaking to her over this, but she's okay with that because he's not awake yet. It was very cult. It was very cult ideology. The rhetoric it was, very was scary. so cult. It was scary. Yeah. It was, and it was scary and it was sad. It yeah. was sad. But it was the interview everyone was talking about this week. They were going to ask us if we watched it. Yes, I did watch it. I felt sad at the end. I felt dirty. I felt pessimistic and gross. You know what I, you know, I felt sad because I thought, where does it go from here? Like, how do you exit this and have healing? Right. Without, or do you just dig in more? I, it seems that the more she does, the more she's digging in. Like, and that's the Twitter, the Twitter feed, her social media presence always had that quality to it. And it just, just snowballed into something more and more outrageous until, it wasn't even like funny to see anymore. It was just getting a little upsetting. So I finally had to pull the plug. I was like, I cannot. Well, I didn't yeah. know, like I've known that like there are conspiracy theories out there and whatnot. And I knew that they were like anti-vax or whatever, you know, but I didn't pay like close, close attention to like yeah. what adrenochrome was.
And I know that the fringes of every group have extremists who believe in all sorts of things. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's something, yeah. Well, glad Ilya got his hands on some because the quad axle looks great. <laughs> no, I think Ateri has been using it for ages, okay? For herself. <laughs> she looks, oh my God, this is so funny. Is my coach Yuri, his wife is in the Mikhail Belusov tango number with a Terry, like from back in the day when they had the three couples. And yeah, she was in the, it wasn't it black with like a green sash or something like that. I, I really think it, yeah. 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 The Daria is in like the red. Okay. And all you have to do for like comedy is just be like, just call a Russian a Terry. Just be like, you're just the kindest woman. And they'll just like, it's just comedy. Like, you don't have to say anything. Like, it's just it's understood. <laughs> okay. Like, amazing. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Have you watched that video on Patreon? I don't know that I've ever watched it with you, the Cherry Vance video. We should watch it together. We yeah, watched the Jamie's Ballet and we finished judging the 2014 Olympics. Ladies. Oh, okay. And Matt. Okay. And the results were different than the stated results in both of the medalists. The, like the order was not the same as it came out in both things. So you'll have to judge me with us soon. It was- um, Yeah, that would be fun. Okay. Skatingscores.com. And we had, you know, some callers maybe disagree with some of the calls that were made in Sochi. And it's, especially in the women's competition. Correct. I felt that Na was being perhaps generous to Mao but we love her the most. Um, but <laughs> she said that that was ethically fine. You know, amazing. And you know what? I'm inclined to agree with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I thought, okay, if we're going to be tough on everyone, don't we have to be consistently tough? No. No. Okay. No. Not in that free program. Well, okay. she was in such an early group. Yeah, you could be lighter then. <laughs> All right, it was fine, okay. it was fine, but okay. okay. Well, how do we feel about the fact that Skate America is coming to the skating club of Boston, Jonathan? On one hand, it's close to us, I'm thrilled. Do you feel like skating is acknowledging its death or is this a realistic expectation like what do you feel what do you what is it well uh, yes so selfishly i'm glad it's returned to the northeast it's a much easier place to travel to i'm not really a vegas person so like the fact that it was becoming so vegas centric a lot of the skating events wasn't totally my favorite i like boston the city very much but i am surprised because that new orleans arena sort of the overall Vegas community seemed to really be anchoring to become a big skating hub. And I didn't know if it was the worst idea to sort of have centralized locations consistently for the skating. Like if Vegas was where you went for Skate America and there was consistency to it, I didn't know that that was such a bad thing. But selfishly, I'm fine to go to Boston. But tell me, I, I'm so intrigued. So first of all, it says like Norwood, right? So at first I panicked. This was like a Lake Placid it's situation. South of Boston. Like it's in the suburbs of Boston, but it's a beautiful facility. But it's the a quarter of the size of the Orleans Arena, which I was wondering. Oh, it is. See, I didn't know that. Okay. But if they're acknowledging that fewer people are going to go, because yeah. be realistic. Right. Maybe the crowd becomes more exciting because they're more condensed, and maybe that's actually better for TV. If yes, I agree. Look, you know, because when you're in a thing and it's full and there's a lot of people and there's not a lot of empty space, it does feel kind of exciting and it does have kind of a good vibe to it that you can build off of. I don't think it ever helps to have like the skating competition on Sunday afternoon on NBC and there's no one in NBC. the seat. And that yeah. damn Sarah McLaughlin commercial about like dogs that are getting put down, euthanized. Like as you watch this commercial, this dog is dying. You know, I, I know. I, well, last year it was exclusively Star Andrews doing guaranteed rate low mortgages. That was the commercial that we were inundated with in Vegas. Get those year. residual so, star, okay? Yeah, like, exactly. Yes. Okay. 
But you know, I wonder if they also feel that in a post Olympic year with the retirements that they don't and without Russia, we'll get into it, that they feel like there are no real headlines that may attract like there is probably no Nathan Chen, no, I don't know, you know, whomever that they thought might have drawn names in the past. So it's fantastic for the Skating Club of Boston to continue to grow their imprint, to continue to grow their center, uh, to host more and more of these competitions that people go to. Remember last year, everyone was competing at Cranberry uh, from the, around, and it was such a big event. And then there was the US International Classic was there, but then people withdrew and it wasn't as exciting as the other, the first competition. Interesting because Greg Marsden, the coach of the University of Utah in gymnastics, was really the first one that got the big crowds to gymnastics, women's gymnastics. And he has different theories on how you build a following. And one of his uh, requirements is always that you have to hold, you have to recruit big talent. I, I forget all the different ones, but you have to recruit big talent, you, which the skating club, I think, is always trying to do to get more and more coaches and talented skaters in there so that more people come. You have to host events. So you have mm. to host big competitions and championships, and then you have to start winning. So they're getting talent. They need to, you know, one up that a, a little bit more. Uh, they need to obviously host events, which they are doing, and then they need to start winning. So yeah. that's that's how you have like a really dominant program. It's but been a while, I feel, since it's been a dominant force, even at national skating club mm -hmm. in Boston, and I feel like it really used to be. Yeah. But I yeah. think in terms of where the sport is going, it seems like they're just going these pockets of like big centralized centers. Um, I don't know, when I was with Galena, she was always like singing the death knell march about there weren't enough kids on the ice being homeschooled during the middle of the day and that, you know, the skating numbers had dwindled, you know, and, and it was noticeable. So that was just one thing about the sport you have to think about, but yeah. Okay, without Russia, how long okay so this is russia is kicked out not for doping but for the situation uh, the invasion of ukraine okay do you think this is good for the sport bad for the sport what is your take on all of the facets and nuances of this it's such a we've talked about it in certain ways before you know listen it's not great that it's happening be, in any way it's not great that the invasion is happening it's not great that their sports are so tied in with politics so that it does directly affect it it's not great that certain athletes who might be innocent victims here are are banned from competing it's unfortunate that it seems like there's punishment for certain coaches actions when in fact there aren't it's like an accidental punishment you know um <clears throat> so I mean, it's never ideal to think that part of your your talent is missing from the sport. However, I think, as we mentioned at Worlds, a course correction needed to happen. And this is accidentally the reason it may happen. Uh, you know, I think that justice is being served, but for the wrong reason, mm -hmm. if, if that makes any sense. I, I think coaches needed to be in trouble. I think people who don't need to be punished. And we do have a punishment, but it came out of out of a totally different direction so it's it's not ideal i i am of the minority it seems i will not miss the russian ladies in competition i will not excuse me let me word that i will not miss the sambo 70 singers singers <laughs> i'm back in an opera and now i'm all confused and it's a russian opera at that i will not miss the sambo 70 skaters so but they're already talking about oh let's shove them over to armenia no problem <laughs> But so, Russia doesn't want to let the skaters go. Uh, yeah. and, and there's so many nuances to that. And we're going to get into that because I have a little inside information there. So, okay. Um, Terry called the USFS about Diana representing America. Because remember, she was born here. Right. And lives, right, Has in Vegas. Has not been given a response back yet. Like, no... Uh, how do you handle that one? She's a U.S. citizen, but what needs to happen? And Would Russia and, ever release her? It gets complicated, right? I mean, they have no money. I mean, their economy, if this continues, 
right? They're, it's going to struggle, but they're going to try to keep sport alive. But how many of these athletes can you keep funded and going? And Annabelle Morozov is another one who could go, she could go to France or the US. Now, other skaters that don't have that dual citizenship, it's different, right? But Nikolai is already teaching here in the US, which I said would happen. And as the blade turns, and we'll be doing more as the blade turns. I know that I've talked about it but for real. Um, but you think about it, what is happening? We see, you know, the team to Bereads a show is, and it's so funny that the media is afraid, still afraid to call it Terry out in Russia, right? The Terry took down all the Z's. Plushenko has like this show that is like a pro-war rally. Notice that the Terry kept her skaters out of the Putin rally in the beginning of the war uh, when they were stomping on the Ukrainian flag. Uh, she has not had the Z up at her show. She was a no-show. Uh, has not been very pro-war. She took down all of the photos of Putin on her Instagram. And now you see Diana is hanging out in the U.S. while everything is going down in Russia. And, and Terry, Bennett, who was the biggest symbol of when I was interviewed by Angelina Nikitina of that Lenta.ru, it was like, you hate Russia because you don't like the Terry skaters. Well, right. who isn't supporting Russia now? Okay. Mm. Well, and there was it was such big news that Sherbakova yeah. did not go to the meeting with Putin, and Rodina lost her what, whatever you're supposed to say there. She went she went bonkers about the fact that Sherbakova did not go to meet Putin. Well, let's think about it. Called her Anna, a traitor. Anna Sherbakova's sister doesn't she go to a college in Switzerland, or she went to right? And her, we always hear about how intelligent and worldly her parents are. It could be strategic. It could, it could be, um, you know, we've always, truce of his father has always been discussed in more brutish terms. You know, there are so many like class differences that we hear between the skaters. I think it's very interesting that it, Terry has not been so pro-Russia, even though she has been the biggest beneficiary of the Russian skating system and the doping and the judges and uh, the propaganda that she became such a symbol. And yet now <laughs> she's not doing her part for Russia, but you see Plushenka is like diving in. He's doing like swan dives into the propaganda and the bullshit of it all. It's very fascinating to watch. And they're not coming for, Rodina's not coming for a Terry yet. She's just, they're still afraid of her. They know that mm. she, mm -hmm. It's very, I'm fascinated about how she is skirting it, but it, like there are whispers about things, but it, yes, that she did call the USFS about. Well, and does she have enough pull with the Russian Federation to say, if you still want me to coach for you guys, you got to release my daughter. They could. Um, yeah. And could she come here? You know, she's selling one of her apartments in Moscow. They, she has to be pissed. I mean, think about what they thought this spring would be because i don't think this is a i don't think they give flying rusty hoot about ukraine fiddle fiddle they right? don't give a fiddle yeah <laughs> i don't think this is really about ukraine this is about think about what the spring was supposed to be like they were supposed to sweep the olympics and the ladies before the whole mess with volume right they were supposed and to then have, go do it at world yeah do it at worlds Think of all the riches that were supposed to come. Last year, they sent out Danny G and Sergey to Mexico to run the clinic. They were supposed to sweep Junior Worlds too, practically. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Think about all the sponsors they would have gotten, all the new endorsements that haven't come in for Sherbakova, Valjeva, Trusova, like the whole situation. They were supposed to be just collecting money and living high on the high. Instead, she's was collecting condemnation from the the head of the IOC, you know, that now there's investigations. Now none of her athletes can compete. Yeah, it's a real turn of events for her. And fast, right? Because a lot of these sanctioned companies, they're not gonna be just throwing money at the figure skaters, you know? Ice Age is canceled. So then she doesn't get the percentage from Midvita and Zagitiva for that. You know, what is gonna happen with these skaters? Her show only had six cities this year. It had more last year. It was supposed to expand theoretically. Those things usually do. Everything is changing, right? But they had it so good and then they could travel anywhere. She could be in the US all the time on vacationing. 
it's been and i'm curious dave like do you think that the interview with Kostranaya did any damage? I mean, to us, to, it merely confirmed exactly what we oh, knew. Exactly what we thought, but, but people would yell at us for saying, but I think it's, right. I think, look, between the interview with Kostranaya, everything that we've witnessed, all of Terry's behavior over the last years on social media, what they have said in interviews, the emotional abuse that is done, in addition to the physical abuse, in addition to the doping, the emotional abuse that those skaters have been put through, and they are so susceptible to it, especially when you start to talk about male coaches preying on young skaters, which has also been discussed in that rink for one particular coach. The emotional abuse that they said that Anna endured Costa Naya. I mean, it was reminiscent of the Corollis, but like on steroids. So mm. because Trusova can Literally. do all the quads and is gritty, she was the one who was favored by a Terry. Now we knew that they used to ignore Costa Naya, send her to skate with the young girls until she got her triple axle back. That happened more than once. Remember the first time she did the triple axle, she had been in a period in the summer where she had been ignored for months. And they and Kusunaya said that Anna got it the worst. Now we were hearing this year that they didn't think Anna was going to make it, and that she willed herself to do it and to become Olympic champion. And I think you can see by the hoopla that we witnessed, perhaps this year, that Valjeva was favored, and Sherbakova was largely ignored, uh, even after winning the Olympics. It did not seem like a genuine response from anyone who cared about her as a human being. And I yeah. think that that was part of the reason why the Olympics were so startling to watch and that worlds felt so cleansing without them there. Yeah, agreed. On one hand, I think that it's because certain channels are blocked and things, you notice that the numbers on the ISD channel during junior worlds were down than they would have been if this were like the latest Russian propaganda exercise of Akatieva and Petrosian going one, two, but Knowing that Dr. Shevetsky is not that he's even on the tour of a Terry, he was Dr. Shevetsky was there. Um, knowing this, you start to think, okay, it was so in our faces, and that this skating, where the skating skills are not that good. We were just rejudging Yulia in Sochi, the mark she got versus the mark she deserved. If you're judging everyone fairly. I mean, at least Sonikova had merit to some of the things that she was doing, right? And, and you witnessed the scoring that we've been gaslit about for years. It does feel cleansing to not have them there and not have this narrative. And then because they get the results, everyone assumes that they're the best and it becomes this cognitive dissonance. That it that's confirms that, that it is good. And it turns out if you think it's not, it's because you don't understand that it's good. And it's like, I, I don't know how we're... Again, we talked about it, 2014 became this great divide and never again did I understand women's podiums. N never yeah. since 2014. Yeah, did they inspire yeah. me the same way? I was uh, having dinner with a friend the other night who used to skate and she's, uh, she manages an Equinox and is a trainer and she was saying, well, at Worlds, I finally understood the judging of the podium and it all just made sense. And it was nice to Even watch. Even though, yes. Even though without a Russian judge or without Russian athletes, there were still some questionable like, oh, I would have called that or like, no, I don't think she's that great. But we were talking about these kinds of variables, not this kind of, I'm looking at someone skate around in the most heinous program I've ever seen and it's getting nine for choreography, you know? I yeah. think in the short term, it will be weird because there is going to be a vacuum of personalities because all of the coverage has been about uh, two Buridza versus Plushenka, Danny G's behavior. So they've gotten all of this oxygen, right? For bad behavior, what they're wearing, everything that we haven't really gotten to know other coaches or other skaters because they've just taken up all of the oxygen. But why would the coach be the most important? Even, you know, I'm trying to think of like who our biggest coaches in the U.S. would have been. Carlo Fossi, Frank Carroll, obviously, you know, for that brief blip, Richard Callahan was always in our face, but, they, but it was have, never about them, was it? They, they were a personality and we recognized them. Yes and no. Know them. I think that they were personalities. I think that they, especially if you Snoopy, 
you know, when he would be the skating coach, he was imitating Carlo Fossi and the videos of him yelling, you know, in broken English, you know, with the Italian accent. I think that Carlo was a mainstay and was someone recognizable and therefore was put forward. And Terry was like the Carolis on steroids, like how they talked yeah. about the Carolis on TV, where they became the star and everyone else became just like a sycophant or a supplicant to that personality. I think she became the star, especially as the skaters became indistinguishable from one another. Yeah, and I guess I viewed it more as instead of schools, it would be like Carlo and Dorothy, or it yeah. would be Frank and Linda, or what whoever they were with at the time. It was they were working together. It wasn't like I am this like super master of all these things, and I have all these interchangeable athletes underneath me that achieve me results. And that it does feel a bit more like the Corollas. I, I think that's the right comparison. But um, again, yeah. times a million. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as problematic as such, right? But I think when you watch, you're like, okay. And yes, Valieva had was differences from Sherbakova, but by and large, if you look at the school, there's so many similarities. The programs aren't that nuanced or different. And then you see, you know, the results of it yield. So it, very Interesting. I'm sorry. I'm just. I just think no, it's, it's okay. a, a lull in the short term. Like, I think we're going to watch some Grand Prix where maybe that first group is not what we would have expected at a Grand Prix. And I think that everyone needs to prepare for that, right? That yeah. But I think it'll take about four to five months. Definitely the Grand Prix through the final. I think by Four Continents, we'll start to see like different rivalries and personalities and storylines kind of emerging of people that are good skaters that we just didn't that didn't have a chance before right like how luna became such a big star this year like i think watching like wakaba and kauri and whatever else and i think some of the korean ladies are going to be more competitive but I, yeah I, I think that there's just going to be change brew there's a so. door that's open. And, and as we know with skating all the time, people just let that door swing open and never feel like going through it, it seems. But I think there are a lot of people that have with their results sort of middled for a long time. And I think, especially I look to the Korean ladies as about to make a huge step forward should, should they be able to focus their energy right and take advantage of this opportunity. I think a Ye Lim Kim, I think a young you, let's see what happens with Lena post worlds and how she's feeling. I think for the Japanese ladies, it'll be interesting. We saw Mai Mihara back on the ice um, in a, in a show this week. And Ma does Mana sort of regroup after, after sort of a clumsy finish to her season. She, I, I think. Match with Yamada they, now. Mana, so she switched coaches. Yeah. I see. That could be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I think there's potential there for a lot of new, exciting rivalries and for different um, aesthetics to just sort of dominate those podiums. And that's what I'm most looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Even in the post-Olympic slump, this will be one of the most fascinating post-Olympic seasons. There yes. may not be quads, but I don't really care. I want to see good skating and, and results that make sense and skating yeah. that's interesting, like it's enjoyable to watch, like here. And that's what I, I think want an great. emotional connection. Yeah, hundred percent. I think we will see more of that. I think the style will start to shift away from the Russian style, and I think that when the Russians inevitably come back, that will be challenging for them. Yeah. You also, have to think about how long is the Russian government going to keep these skaters drugged up? and motivated if there are no international competitions. Like what happens to a Katyev and Petrosian? How long do you withstand the daily grind and emotional, mental, physical abuse, wear and tear of that training school when there's nothing external to get from it? And how long until a Danny G or someone takes an offer to go somewhere else because they've had enough of struggling? Well, and you bring up an interesting point, because what was so interesting during uh, COVID and during the pandemic was how much the Russian Federation still, in a noble way for their athletes, you know what I mean, trying to keep them current, 
kept them competing at these huge events that were very competitive and they were very motivated to do well at them. However, like you're saying, there was the money to do that then. And so I think they have the resources that they would put on an anti-Skate America and an anti-Grand Prix final and an anti your They would go through the whole um, season, you know, just domestically. And they would say it's the best competition anyway, blah, blah, blah. They could still be motivated. But without all those sponsors, I don't know what it is they're capable of doing. And I think it was Blushenko. Someone made the comment like, well, if they're not going to allow us, we won't invite any of them to our events we'll be having. And then as you made the point previously, they never did. They yeah. never included any, any sort of skater from the outside in their events where other countries always had for them. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think there could be enough motivation domestically, but I don't think, I, or I don't understand how they'll have the funding in order to, to keep all it, of that going. It'll still harm them in terms of when they come back. Cause remember they would only get like one skater at Worlds. And if you know these things continue, I think because we just watched meddling and we've seen so many judging things happen and we've seen how true, I mean, Frank Carroll was just talking about, you know, the components, you know, he was implying about Trusova that she should be getting, right? And the ISU even uses her as an example in a video. And we've seen that they haven't been judged accordingly, but for years, right? And it's been this, this real problem that has gotten so out of control, but that the ISU went along with. Um, you know, there is a chance now that new people are running for uh, ISU president, one of them is Pat St. Peter of the USFS. I think what's hard is that we don't know what they stand for, what their views are, other than the USFS has been more conservative, but I think now maybe is the chance that someone could get in the ISU and right ship a little, you would hope, to make decisions that could get the sport back on. Well, and, and we read something. So in the, in the announcement that they said, until further notice, which I don't know what that means because it seemed clear they were looking to relocate the Ross Telecom Cup. So we, I feel like definitely for the Grand Prix, I don't know if suddenly they'll make an emergence again for Europeans and worlds. Um, but it does seem clear, at least for the Grand Prix, that, that no officials, I'm assuming that also means judges. But again, we've already had questions about coaches because we've seen mm -hmm. coaches with the Russian Federation at the competition since that ban. Um, but God, where was I going with that? It must have been really good. Well, I, mean, they totally... come back. I mean, yeah, assume that they're out for this season, right? Okay. It's really... Okay. Unless something drastically happens with Ukraine and Russia, but you wonder what kind of conclusion to that. The other thing is, unfortunately, this also comes down to money and does. Oh, the sorry, IFC... Dave. I'm going to interrupt again because clearly okay. I can't hold a thought because I'm memorizing all this Russian for the opera. Oh, right. my God. Okay. <laughs> so what it said was that someone had said, oh, well, then we shouldn't have any Russians or Belarusians on the ballot for positions in the ISU. But the ISU said there was nothing in the, in the bylaws or the language that allowed them to, to create that caveat. So they are still eligible for office mm -hmm. in the ISU. So I don't understand, will they be voting? No, I, I, it, my it's very they're not voting, but they are running. Okay. Is, but it seems like, so even the Russian articles that I was reading, it seems that they're going to go to Phuket, but that they don't know if they're actually going to be able to vote or participate. So they may be on the ballot, but not actually having voting. the same power. Okay. I think that they've certainly controlled things politically for many years, and we'll have to see when they lose. The important thing also is that this could be the first time there's actually a figure skating president of the ISU in our lifetime. So that is very different and yeah. something, I mean- you have Something to think long about, overdue, yeah. When they got rid of the 6-0 system and all of these changes kept happening. I mean, think about how the USFS had people in the ISU, but they didn't necessarily think strategically and preserve the US interests. Almost all of the big changes actually kind of hurt the US over time. The US had the ice when figures were eliminated the U.S. was one of the countries that had the resources to do that. And one of the interesting 
things is that when they stop selling as much ice for figures, the rinks just filled that time with hockey. Right. And that's one of the things that helped hockey in the US. You think about like things have hurt the sport more and more over time. I mean, hockey is booming in the US. Right. If you've got any rinks, I mean, it keeps a lot of these rinks alive. I, I think that the USFS, hopefully, Pat St. Peter would have maybe a more holistic view on changes that need to happen, but it's hard to know. They don't, they don't have a, um, a debate. You know, if there's no presidential debate happening for the ISU, would love to watch one. Um, but there should be, yes. And you should put it on the ISU channel. Let's hear from certain candidates, even if it's a pre-recorded sort of spiel. What do you stand for and what are the changes you, you would like to see? I, I think that would be so much more an informed decision instead of a popularity contest. But now, do you have a big opinion on the age rule? That you know, it seems like it's going to go through. It's going to be seventeen. You know what I do, and I understand uh, when you have commented like, "Oh, this is a cosmetic change about some of the corruption that can happen." Like, if what you can do to a fifteen-year-old, you know, certain federations will still find a way to do it to a seventeen-year-old. Just in general, at some point, especially calling it women. You, you know, it has geared, and I see a lot of junior looking skating, and I see a lot of young girls skating that I would be excited about if they were junior. And I, I just, is that what I want to see the Olympic podium made up of? No. So uh, I'm of the, because I think a course correction is needed in the overall aesthetic in the women's discipline, I can't help but think any sort of thing that pushes it just a little bit older will create programs that have more of a perspective that can say a little bit something that understandably a 15 year old cannot say. And I think it ensures, you know, a lot of people brought up Alyssa because she obviously retired soon, early. Uh, she did not retire because her body broke. She made it through the change, but I think she was just burnt out and even that, like maybe her trajectory would have been different if, you know, if they knew they were in it for the marathon, not a short sprint. Maybe she would have learned different technique and they would have spent more time earlier in development. Yeah. There I wouldn't agree. have been a rush. Yeah. I think there's an opportunity with the dual effect of Russia being out of the competition, promoting maybe the more Japanese style of skating, because that's inevitably what will happen. Uh, it'll be a more North American, more Japanese style, although so many of North American coaches have Russian coaches now, but it'll be by and large, uh, a little bit of a different style. I think the Japanese style obviously will be rising to the top. And I think with the Korean ladies as well. Uh, and I think it's an opportunity to cultivate these longer Kauri type, Suwakaba type skaters. That's, I yeah. think will happen when Russia comes back. Well, that's going to be a different discussion, but I think that the expectation and what's winning will have changed because you could even see it in the U.S. Everyone started to copy what was winning, as though that. And was you can't style. blame them. I mean, that's the message being sent. This style wins, and even even back Rika Kahira, who stuck out so much in a beautiful way when she was a junior at the Grand Prix final with all the other Russian ladies in their cluttery program they started to try to go more cluttery because that's clearly what was being rewarded. So I hope when those sort of cluttery programs that optimize points, but nothing aesthetically beautiful in them, uh, I hope they stick out even more when they return as a, oh, right, that really isn't, even though we've gotten used to that, that isn't what we want going forward, regardless of what country is doing it, just to reiterate, you know what I mean? It doesn't, a cluttered program, a Danny G program from any country is horrifying, so. Yeah. Now we do have some news about shifting. So Amber Glenn has been in Colorado trying out skating with Damon Allen right now. So that would be an interesting turn of events because the US needs lady skaters. Benoit yeah. has been talks to be in Boston or in the area. We'll have to see what happens there. Originally he was gonna team up with Sergei Rizanov and that is obviously not happening uh, because of he's in Russia. Now, I would also be curious what's gonna happen with the cricket club. And I think we need to pay close attention because everyone is talking about how Brian and Tracy are doing all of these camps. They're going around the country, they're going around, you know, to different countries and different places over the summer. Why do they do that besides making my job? Are we recruiting? Do you think they're collecting skaters? 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, our, I heard Misa G is bringing his skaters to the cricket club. That would be like Kazuki Tomono. We heard maybe mm. Mike Clark will be there this summer. Think about like who you could just like pick the best and re tool after covid and refresh yeah i wouldn't think that they're, you think they're like they, they're like we have a clean slate let's start again let's basically mm -hmm. look for college admissions into our conservatory of skating yeah okay okay mm -hmm. well that and you know what that's smart yeah hopefully we work more on this a little more you know that would be good at the cricket yeah. club but okay. yeah. i think <laughs> by large, that i think we will see I think the cricket club, there's, listen, there's a vacuum of a Terry. Mm -hmm. You have to look at who have been the coaches who have had successful results over time. The cricket club certainly has. I think it's a big opportunity for them. So I'm, I'm going to, I don't always understand. So Kim Yuna, Yuna Kim, because mm -hmm. we say Ye Lim Kim. So I guess let's say Yuna Kim. Um, she had such success with Brian, and we know that there clearly has been um, a lot of homage kind of skating to, to Yuna mm -hmm. Kim in Korea with certain ladies' music and programs and things like that. Now, I know when she came back, she decided to go a different route with the coaching staff, but I am surprised that some of the Korean skaters did not seek him out. I know, obviously, Jun Hwa has, but I, oh, I was surprised. That's because um, her mother runs all that skate, the talent agency. And maybe Brian and um, Yuna's mother get along about as well as... Two things that don't get along. <laughs> Insert joke about two opposite things here. <laughs> Love each other as much as Frank and Danny Kwan or... Uh, <laughs> Galena okay. Cohen and Tarasova or yada, okay. right? I think that there's still those kinds of things. I think the split between Brian and Yuna was not the best, so. Okay, and that, that since she runs the agency that most of the skaters are with, you're saying? Because yes. I know Unsu was with her. I did not know if the other three were as well, or four, yeah. or five now, yeah, okay. I think that's, it's all about that rift. Got so, it, okay. Yeah. Unfortunately. Although David Wilson seems fine because he's still working with many Korean skaters. But remember that it was that like there were talks or rumors that Yuna was going to retire and that Mao wanted to go to Brian Orster. And it all got like really messy around that time. But no one ever said explicitly what happened. But it okay. got really, got it. there was got a it. big risk and I think pain there. So mm. okay, that's why we haven't seen those other ladies back there so but i mean i will be very fascinated who they recruit from this imagine if they coach kazuki tomono like although you know i mean yes he could you know have some help with the style and some of the programs but the technique is so good i wouldn't yeah. want anyone to really mess with it yeah but they could probably get him to do like a quad loop or something you know a little okay. polish a little packaging yeah. Okay. I could see them having like a Mami Hara situation or, or someone, right? Rika's there and has been there. I don't know, I could see them picking from here and there and everywhere. I think it's okay. possible. So okay. I, don't, I don't think it, and I think Conrad Orzel has been skating with Ravi Walia. Uh, oh, okay. And his sister. So yeah, I think that there's like shifting happening around so I don't, I don't know right on and schedule for after the olympic season right <laughs> it does seem like people are going to see stars on ice and i had tickets and when i'm not going but it seems like people are attending and enjoying it so yeah this is good it's good i see some more publicity good stuff. Than usual for post olympic yeah. skating so it's you know little <laughs> breadcrumbs that are well and again i think for many people that did not feel comfortable going to nashville and things like that maybe they do feel comfortable now going a little bit more locally to see live skating for the first time in a long time you know i i was still sort of seeing it throughout this season but i know many people that were kind of waiting so i, I, I hope know. it was drawing it nashville was like a bizarre world i mean that was i know yeah I, yeah yeah. yeah, I came back, wasn't sure if I was sick or not for weeks because there was so much stress. And I right. had like a feeling in my chest. Yes, that was, no one was wearing masks. <laughs> so was, yeah, that was, but it, it is interesting. And I had sung there in the summer and it was, it was 
far less masked in that summer. It is funny, just geographically. It's just like, oh, it doesn't exist here, and it super exists here. Yeah. It was a well, lately I've had a bunch of friends in Canada who have been getting uh, COVID recently, and mm. then other people have gotten it with the different variants that are going on. So it's not completely mm. done, but we are yeah. seeing different things happening. So. Yeah. Yeah. I have heard more and more people recently talking about having COVID, even though. Okay. I see fewer and fewer masks anywhere. So yeah. No. It's crazy. Jamie Saleh would say they are doing it. <laughs> Jonathan, okay. That's it right. Is. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. Did you see the Shoma clip that we saw of him skating to gravity? I just have to say the edges were like shades butter. of Patrick. I was like butter. Yeah. Like I'm he, loving it. He even gave us one of these <laughs> with like the neck rub, but like on the side. Yeah, it was very, very dramatic. <laughs> I did peek at a couple of clips of the Atari show, not everything, but I did peek at Kolya Da. I thought it was very interesting that Atari, you know, included a fall from Kolya Da on her official channel. <laughs> <laughs> interesting or expected. Yeah, obvious. Come on. That's so obvious. Yeah. Oh, man. Just the entertainment value. But you know what? It's like a nice cleansing of things happening. Let us miss them. Then they will bring entertainment to our lives. I and can't imagine. Did they include the link to Costa Naya's interview? <laughs> like for Max, she, there was someone that was shading her that she would want to get paid to do an exclusive interview. They were almost, but it was almost like they were attacking her because she doesn't have the protection of a Terry or even Plushenka anymore. So they were really attacking this young girl which a lot of people in Russia get paid for doing interviews, it seems, in the press. So mm. someone, listen, someone that's in the Russian press all the time, we, I reached out to them, seeing if they wanted to do a recap and they wanted to get paid so much money and whatnot. I mean, it's very upfront. So yeah. um, the other thing is, uh, yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. They're also, Trusova said that she wants to land a quintuple. And it's interesting that now that she's not with, they haven't officially announced that she left a Terry, but if you look at the people that are for and against her, all of the pro Terry people, like even Zelizhnyakov was like, well, she should learn how to skate a clean program first. And then the ones that are pro Plushenka are like, she has all the physical talent in the world. She can do anything she wants. If anyone can. She can, yeah, I read that. It's oh, yeah. so, people watching the press, oh, they just attack her like over and over. Yeah. yeah, such a nice funny. sport. Such a nice. I guess, like, gosh, maybe it's better that it's not so popular in the U.S. to keep all of that sort of at bay. Like, is, yes. yeah, kind yeah. people, kind, yeah. kind. I mean, again, that interview said nothing that I didn't expect, but I was impressed to read it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, she went for it. No holds barred. Yeah. Hold an edge, it looks sexy. 